Welcome back, everybody, to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host, T. How are we all doing today? In this video, I'm going to be talking about the R&B girls, some of the new school, and some of the old school, okay? This video is going to have unpopular opinions, so please keep that in mind but y'all know i welcome different opinions different perspectives in my comments i love when y'all comment thank you so much everybody who watches and those who are subscribed turn on your notifications i'm on ig now i gotta keep posting i gotta like really get serious on ig i mainly be on here but just thank you to my subscribers and everybody who watches just get ready to you know let's talk in the comments but here i go please like share and subscribe Okay, so I will be doing a video about the R&B guys as well, but this video is just going to focus on the female artist. Um, I feel like R&B music has been replaced by rap music. Like R&B is still there, but it's not as popular as it used to be because the industry is pushing rap and the people who we do have in R&B like Summer Walker, SZA, you know, they don't push a good image because the industry is focused on pushing the agenda that makes people you know or to push people to be super sexual super violent and a fucking degenerate okay hence SZA's dusty ass song Kill Bill being so goddamn popular but I digress for just a second because I'm about to read down okay so who I'm gonna start with Beyonce, our queen. Beyonce is the undisputed R&B queen. She is the most consistent, has the most longevity, the most promo, the best visuals, the biggest budget. She should have collaborated more throughout her career, though, in my opinion. She should have collaborated with Ashanti, Mary J. Blige. She should have did more collabs with Kelly Rowland when they became solo artists. And she should have collabed with Solange, too, instead of trying to sabotage everybody and be fucking queen. She also could have collabed with Aaliyah when Aaliyah was alive, but, you know, she clearly felt like Aaliyah was a threat and allegedly played a part in helping to delete Aaliyah, okay? I think that um, if Beyonce doesn't already regret not having more collabs under her belt with other R&B artists, she might in the future. Um, you know, I do think that part of why Beyonce does not collab as much as she should is because she does see her peers as competition and as threats when she really shouldn't. But I think that that's a sign that Beyonce is... Um, a little bit insecure artistically, hence all of the stealing allegations, the lack of writing her own music, and settling out of court with dozens of artists and creators over the last two to three decades. So that's just my opinion. Um, but these days, Beyonce is too busy pandering to the alphabet community to really give a fuck about R&B music or her core fan base. Okay, moving on, Summer Walker. Summer Walker does have vocals, but her music is extremely toxic and low vibrational. And she um, is she represents or portrays an image of black women and herself, really herself, that is just despicable and disgusting. She's pushing a toxic program. I'm so sick of her and her social anxiety that turns on and off like a fucking light switch and her and that fucking Jackson family botched ass nose job. I'm done with Summer Walker and I don't listen to her. She's toxic. SZA with her non-singing but stay lying ass. I'm sick of SZA, her frizzy wigs, and that stank ass BBL. I wish I could make her disappear. She is ugly, she cannot sing, her BBL is bad, and she's a compulsive liar. I want SZA out of here, but unfortunately, she is just the runt of the litter that the need that the media needs to promote and push negative agendas surrounding black women and black music. Moving on, Beyonce's protégés, <laughs> aka slaves, Chloe and Holly, truly talented ladies, but Beyonce has sabotaged them to move them out of the way to make room for Blue Ivy, who I do not think is going to be successful musically at all. I don't care how much money they put behind Blue, I will not be streaming, and I don't think Blue is going to be as big as they want her to be. So it's just like you're sacrificing Chloe and Holly in vain, in my opinion. They are industry slaves. They have Holly in a bad relationship with DDG, because please believe, I believe that is all fabricated. I think that's all industry antics, but they're doing that to lower her vibration and push a negative agenda. 
okay? Chloe is actually very talented, but Beyonce is sabotaging her. I have a whole video about it. Go check it out if you'd like. Normani, another one, being sabotaged by the Carters for Blue Ivy's future success. She can sing, she can dance, very talented, but they are trying to sex her image up way too much. She needs to leave Hollywood. I have said this time and time again. Normani is one of those people, I think she really does have a soul in there. She needs to leave Hollywood if she wants to keep it. Because the truth of the matter is, whether Normani sells her soul or not, as long as she stays in Hollywood, they're going to continue to sabotage her. If she sells her soul if she hasn't already it'll be again in vain and all for nothing don't let that be you Normani her R&B artist her she can sing her ass off has hits haven't seen her in a while I think she's taking a break last time I saw her she's finally showing her face I didn't really care if she showed her face or not at all because I'm here for the music I like how she stays out of the media I like her I like a lot of her music um, so I like her. She's a great R&B artist. I think, you know, she should be here to stay. Ari Lennox. I forgot all about her. I had to Google her. I had to Google her song to find her name. She, I don't know what she has going on. I don't, I think they're trying to make her into an IG model, change up her aesthetic. I think she's can sing super talented, but the media needs to push people like Summer Walker, SZA, and anybody else that is down with degeneracy, degrading themselves, and pushing the Black Jezebel agenda, you know? So Ari Lennox, great girl. Another girl, though, who should probably leave Hollywood and go independent or just release music and stay and, and lay low so she can focus on her core fans. Ella May, almost forgot about her. Where is she at? Her last hit was Trip with Jacquez, which I have playing now, but she let herself get so big-headed, she didn't take advantage of that collab. Um, haven't heard from her in a while, don't really miss her, so moving on. She can sing, but I'm just, you know, I don't know anything that was hitting for her past Boot Up and Trip, and Trip is only good with Jacquez. Um, Queen Nija, ugly and colorist, who gives a fuck? Moving on. Let me get into the forgotten people. Janae Aiko can't sing. Toxic, pushes negative agendas. She doesn't have the it factor. Her music ain't good. She's literally interchangeable with Georgia Smith as they both make songs that are extremely fucking forgettable. And neither of them have it factor. The only difference is Janae has a better body, has a better body than um Georgia Smith. Two of Drake's throwaways that we are still dealing with. Unfortunately, Drake, come get your bitches. Solange, another great R&B artist. She needs to drop new music. Her vocals are not as strong as Beyonce's, but she's a great composer. Beyonce is a fool for not working with her more. Wish she had more promo, but real people don't want to be a product. Kelly Rowland, another one, can sing her butt off, sabotage for Beyonce's success. Would have been real competition for Beyonce, so they had to move Kelly out the way. If she had more promo, again, she'd be real competition, and they couldn't have that, especially because she's brown skin. Cash Page, you may, may or may not know her. I think she's signed over there with Travis Scott and Cactus Jack and all that. She can sing, not getting enough promo. Mooney Long can sing, not getting enough promo. Chrisette Michelle, the black community has not forgiven her behind that Trump shit, and I'm glad that we haven't. Shout out to Trump and the black people as a collective for getting her out of our faces. I do not like Chrisette Michelle's voice. She sounds like she has something stuck in her fucking throat, and I don't like looking at her either. Um, Marsha Ambrosius is a much better artist, and she could end Chrisette Michelle's complete discography and existence just by humming in the fucking shower. Like, I'm not here for Chrisette but I stand Marsha Ambrosio's. Her voice is much better, okay? Kalani, stank and scandalous, can sing, but she's extremely unlikable and she spends most of her time getting into fucking gimmicks and antics. Girl, bye. Old school girls that we miss or may not miss. Mary J. Blige, we call her Queen Mary for a motherfucking reason. I miss her. She's absolutely iconic. The dance moves, the boots, the blonde. She's that motherfucking bitch. No slander will be tolerated. She's not known for vocals like Mariah or Beyonce or Whitney, but she sounds better than most. Her lyrics be hitting. She makes music that ladies can feel. She's a straight up certified bona fide fucking hit maker. All respect to her. I fucking love Mary J. Blige. 
Ashanti is another late 90s, early 2000s R&B girl that I miss a ton. I think her uh, verse on the Gotta Move On remix with Diddy was a standout verse. She totally made the song. It's the only verse I listen to. She's the only reason why I even gave that song a chance. I think Ashanti has it girl energy. She's beautiful on the outside. Um, I really, really like her vocals. The girl can sing her butt off. She's got angelic vocals. She can write. You know, she's multi-talented. Love me some Ashanti. The game is definitely dry and different without her. I do believe that Ashanti and Beyonce should have collaborated together when they were both um, active around the same time in the early 2000s. But you know more more missed opportunity on Beyonce's part again in my opera in my mind but I think something that Ashante should have took um, note from Beyonce with is the man she chose I think there's a reason why Beyonce gives Jay-Z so much credit um, over her career and it's because Jay-Z has played a big part in Beyonce's success I think after Ashante left Irv Gotti she should have got with another music exec who could have taken her career further because Nelly really can't you know do that much for Ashanti so um, and he hasn't been able to so my opinion on that she should have got with another executive but other than that ashante is missed she's that girl um next erica badu i'm over erica badu she has some hits but erica badu is a goddamn witch who was too cocky about her used perpetual baby mama coochie girl please how about you go put a root on one of them niggas so that they can actually stay and marry your ass next case mariah amazing love her her discography is so motherfucking cold and extensive she really doesn't need to come back to the game i love mariah though uh she's that girl people say that her vocals ain't what they used to be but it doesn't matter because her discography is immaculate like slipping away um her emancipation of mimi album um always be my baby like those are classic hits that will stand the test of time mariah's vocals in her heyday were fucking undefeated the only person who could like kind of see her is Aaliyah and whitney so love mariah um she's given she's given us enough music that if she wants to stay retired i understand Aaliyah, loose rap alone ends all the new r&b girls okay that is one of my favorite Aaliyah songs Aaliyah, we know she's one of the only true sopranos that we've heard in a long time. Miss Aaliyah, love Aaliyah. She could dance, she could act, she could sing. She was absolutely a threat to Beyonce. So I could understand why uh, the Knowles family and the Carter kingdom may have felt like they needed to help delete Aaliyah, allegedly, for Beyonce's success because Aaliyah was an actual threat to Beyonce. Miss her so much, forever in our hearts. We love her, I love her. Beautiful too, beautiful sing, act, dance, she's that girl. R.I.P. to her. Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole has some, she has hits, she has vocals, she has great lyrics. But like Monica, she's too ghetto and too hood for her own good. And I think that has ruined her image a lot. Um, I like Keisha's music, but she's going to just turn me off with a lot of her public antics. So wishing her the best. Uh, I miss R&B groups like Total and SWV. I miss girls like Kelly Price and Nicole Ray. Girls who could really, really sing, putting out true classic R&B music. We miss them. But again, we now have to deal with hoochies. Um, Monica, too focused on being a goon, a jailhouse queen, an Instagram model. Tired of Monica. I don't like ghetto hostile bitches like Monica. Monica's always trying to fucking be ghetto, trying to be hood, trying to act like she'll do something. It's like, girl, please, you made your money. Stop acting like you fresh out of the fucking Cabrini Green projects. Like, I can't stand a hostile hood bitch. Bye, Monica. Get out of my face. Brandy, I actually miss Brandy. Full Moon is still a classic, full of hits. Brandy, you know, she's had her fuck ups, you know, in her personal life, but we talking about music. Brandy is that motherfucking girl, and I fuck with Brandy. She carries herself a lot better than the other one. Go, Brandy. We miss you, girl. Jill Scott, 
I miss Jill Scott. She could sing her ass off, but she's too busy nowadays giving overly sexual performances or doing performances where she's trying to keep black people in a low vibration. I did a video about it, her Essence Fest fiasco. So she's like Beyonce to me nowadays, very talented woman, beautiful woman, but pandering too much. I can't deal. Faith Evans, Soon As I Get Home is my song. I don't really know any of her other music. I don't even know if she can really sing or not. She's not my, she's not really my generation. I know of Faith Evans, but again, outside of Soon As I Get Home, I don't. Fantasia, love me some Fantasia. Um, I really don't like her music that much, but I just like Fantasia's energy. I know she can sing, and I think she's extremely talented. I love that she has ventured into acting. I love her on Broadway. I love her in the Color Purple film. Like I like that she's doing that, and I really want her to continue to book acting gigs and Broadway gigs because she has the talent. She has the vocals. I really, really love that about Fantasia. I like seeing her win, and I just wish her much continued success. Alicia Keys, a talented whore who gave up her career to sit on somebody else's husband's dick, but it was worth it because fuck the industry when you get a rich nigga like uh, Swiss Beats. You know what I mean? I could, I ain't even mad. I ain't, I ain't even hating on her kicking her motherfucking feet up. If y'all still mad about it, that's on y'all. Alicia, she's got some good music. You know, she do, but of course, people are really not fucking with her no more after Swiss Beats. And to be honest, I do think her music quality has declined since being with him. Like, Alicia got some songs that I fucking love. Like, her song, Yes, I Was Burned, like, but, I, but Lesson Learned, like, with John Mayer, complete fucking hit. Her song with Drake, hit. Her song, um, Secrets, hit. Like, uh, her song, Karma, hit. Like, Alicia got hits. Alicia, you know, her, her vocals may not be Mariah, Aaliyah, Beyonce, but Alicia is talented. She can play a fucking instrument and the girl got hits. She just, you know, she picked a, a man over her career. And I can't say that, again, I blame her when you can't take her talent away. You can't take her previous success away. And again, Swiss Beats is a very rich nigga. So what would you do? Let's talk. Last but not least, Sade. The definition of fuck the industry, beautiful, talented, classic hits, timeless music. Uh, we love Sade. I love Sade. I can totally understand why she feels like, um, no, I will not be playing in the mud with these other bitches. Like, I, I feel her. I can totally understand why she's not uh, constantly grinding for the industry. I respect that about her. I think her discography has been carrying us for decades and I respect it you know I love her music again timeless classic I'm fucking with Sade and I respect people I respect artists who are again who are not like oh I just gotta be the number one in my field because good music is it cannot be um disputed and good music lasts forever you know people are gonna sample you people are gonna people are, are gonna fuck with it especially once you do reach that mainstream success you good you know, you're good. You don't really have to keep, you know, sweating and grinding for the industry. So I respect Sade. I respect people like Solange, you know, who who work but are not constantly feeling the need to just get involved with some of the gimmicks and the antics of Hollywood. So shout out to Sade. Shout out to all the girls on this list who have real talent, who can really sing, and who've been grinding for years. So let's talk in the comments, y'all. I loved just having this video, talking to y'all today. Can't wait to talk to y'all in the next one. Bye. Have a great day, y'all.